I have with me now Mrs. Proskovia Nabanja, CEO, Uganda National Oil Company. Welcome back to Adipec. Let's talk about the situation in Africa and the energy transition roadmap. How do you see it? How it is evolving, specifically in Uganda? Uh, thank you so much. I think the energy transition question is a global issue. And Uganda or Africa can't shy away from the fact that we need to, you know, be greener. But at the same time, we need to address the issues of um, energy security and energy access uh, for our country. 600 million people uh, in sub-Saharan -Sub Africa have no access to energy and we need to address the issue of energy poverty. So um, in terms of project profiling, certainly we'll try as much as possible to include uh, cleaner technologies to deliver energy to our people, but at the same time protecting the environment. Um, environmental considerations have always been put at the forefront of the planning for our projects and the standards, um, global standards really for project implementation like IFC standards and Equita principles. So um, the projects are on track and we believe we can address the issue of energy security um, for our country. However, I think the reference points have to be different depending on the location. The Western world should be having a, re a different reference point from what Africa would have, because for us, um, the issue of energy poverty for the rural communities uh, for Africa has to be a priority. But can we do it greener? Absolutely, yes. We can incorporate technologies. We can include um, uh, initiatives that drive for you know, a greener climate, but also integrate ourselves into strategic partnerships that foster um, the climate action imperatives. So yes, we will go greener, but we need to provide energy access and security for our communities. Mm -hmm. um, all this needs investments, a huge project, lots of uh, high ambitions. Um, how are you managing these uh, investments and what are you doing to attract it? I think it's a question of uh, demonstrating the fact that the investments are going to contribute to socioeconomic transformation for our countries, but at the same time, the investments are not going to be shy of um, initiatives that are going to drive climate action. Mm -hmm. So we'll do greener investments, but at the same time, we look at what success looks like for our economies because uh, there's going to be massive contribution to the balance of payments, to the GDP for the country, technology skills transfer, the jobs that are going to be created. And you can't remove that piece from what success looks like. So yes, um, in terms of attracting investment, I think it's, going, it's always going to be a balance between the socioeconomic factors and also demonstrating that actually the projects we are putting on stream are actually Putting initiatives uh, of climate action. Mm -hmm. COP27 in Egypt, COP28 in UAE, uh, what are your expectations from these huge events? Mm -hmm. My expectation uh, from COP28, which will be here, and it's going to be an exciting one, is that um, all energy companies will sit on a table. The energy producers, regardless of what form of energy is being discussed, the policy makers, the regulators, civil society, all different stakeholders should come, you know, under one platform and look for solutions rather than eliminating some of the energy producers. Because the oil and gas industry still plays a fundamental role in economic transformation, especially from Africa. So um, again, energy transition may look different. The, um, the initiatives around climate action are good, but again, you have to put on um, the lens of the location or the reference point and look for solutions that are going to address the most uh, priority areas uh, for those different locations. But um, I think I'm excited about COP28. I think it gives us an opportunity, again, as an industry to raise our awareness, to raise the voices, to show the good that the industry can do because uh, remember the oil and gas industry is so well grounded in research and development and I believe we can play a fundamental role in creating solutions around climate change 
uh, compared to really eliminating our industry uh, from the conversation. So I'm excited to see um, uh, COP28 here in Abu Dhabi, and I hope we'll be part of that conversation. A message, a final message you would like to send from Uganda to the world, to the companies in the energy sector, what do you tell them? Um, Uganda is um, new in the oil and gas uh, industry space. We are not producing yet, but we are very, very ambitious in bringing these resources um, uh, out of the ground because we know the benefits of those resources and how transformational they're going to be uh, to our economy. We commit to do it, you know, with the right standards, with good technology. We commit to reducing carbon emissions. We commit um, to utilizing, you know, all these oil and gas resources to transform our economy. So the investment climate, we are open. We want people to come in. We want them to be part of this narrative to show the transformational uh, change that uh, our industry can, you know, can make. And everyone should be excited to be part of that, that story for Uganda.